Hi, so it's been about four years ago when the first um, infection, what we now call the... No. Hi, um, it's been about four years ago since the first infection with what we now call the coronavirus has been discovered in Wuhan, China, and yet we're now all back where we were before, or almost. Uh, so let's talk about how that happened. In particular, one thing that helped a lot, the vaccine. And just after the high, I made a mistake. It was only in December 2019 that in Wuhan, China, the first patient fell victim to a novel virus. After inspection, it was found out that the virus was very similar to the original SARS virus hitting China around 2003, followed by outbreaks elsewhere in Asia, Canada, the US and some European countries. But that's not what I want to talk about today. In about March 2020, the coronavirus entered the Netherlands and we immediately went into a lockdown. Of course, this led to quite a number of conspiracy theories. Some are a bit more credible, like that COVID somehow emerged in or escaped a bio lab, whilst others are ridiculous, like the one that says that COVID was caused by 5G radiation. <laughs> <laughs> but regardless, for those too young to remember, we ended up in a lockdown that closed almost all shops, um, services, schools, etc. That was expected to take a couple weeks, then was extended and extended and extended until around July 2020. But afterwards, around autumn 2020, there was another peak which ended around October 2020 and then continued on towards Christmas and the New Year's Eve. <laughs> Just temporary remedies to stop the spread of the virus. 2021 saw the Alpha variant come up, uh, which caused lockdowns again, as did the Delta variant. One of the first medical technical remedies that was found was what's known as the PCR test. In this, um, a little cotton swab was used to take a little bit of slime out of one's mouth and the DNA particles inside and the RNA particles are multiplied through a very complex biological process. After an intensive analysis, this could eventually be used to conclude that someone has or doesn't have COVID-19. Uh, this could potentially take days or weeks depending on capacity and therefore was later partly superseded by a coronavirus self-check which actually uses chemical um, reactions to detect antigens of the COVID-19 and use those as an indication as to whether or not someone has COVID-19. And if that test showed positive, you had to go and take a PCR test. It actually happened to me once. I had corona confirmed by the uh, self-test that we did from time to time. And when you were tested positive by the PCR test, you had to stay at home until your symptoms um, resolved. Of course, the lockdowns and the uh, mortality rate of COVID-19 were already enough to cause severe economic disruption. But what was even worse was that apparently the coronavirus was found in minks uh, in large quantities. And that could be considered dangerous because these were grey spreading and mutation vectors for the virus and could therefore lead to even more variants to be aware of, which could potentially be more dangerous or more infectious or both. Uh, therefore, held by farms, at least Dutch farms, were eliminated. Like literally, they were gassed to death because they could potentially contain the coronavirus. But of course, now the coronavirus itself also had to be eliminated. That was the point of all of these measures, among many others. And perhaps the most effective of them all was the vaccine. Normally, vaccines can take years to develop, but this time it only took months before the first conformity vaccine was given to people at high risk of COVID. Why could that possibly be? Well, first of all, the COVID-19 was part of the same brand as... SARS-CoV-1, the original SARS virus, and therefore loads of experience from back then could be used right now. Second of all, certain test stages of the coronavirus vaccine 
were combined into each other. As in, they were all still executed, but just simultaneously or in different orders. The third reason, interesting enough, was that most coronavirus vaccines were what's called RNA viruses. RNA vaccines work very differently from normal vaccines and are in fact a very experimental technique. In a conventional vaccine, a uh, virus is first bred in tissue and then killed or weakened and then put into a special kind of chemical substrate that allows the virus to still retain its activity and structure whilst not being effective enough to infect a person. Um, this takes long amounts of time to develop compared to RNA vaccines. They actually literally just contain the code of the spike uh, proteins that are used by the coronavirus to link onto a cell as RNA. The body then goes to make these spike proteins even though they're actually foreign and that trips the immune system causing it to train itself on that spike protein just like it would on an actual dead or weakened virus from a conventional vaccine. Another weird thing about the coronavirus vaccine is what there was actually a rush by multiple companies to make them which therefore leads to multiple variants of the coronavirus vaccine. Uh, there was Pfizer, there was Moderna, there was the Johnson Johnson vaccine, uh, there was the Novavax vaccine and some other vaccines. Each with their own advantages, disadvantages, and some of them weren't even RNA vaccines. There were also what's called viral vector vaccines, which used a genetically modified virus as the carrier of the DNA to hold the code of the um, spike protein of the coronavirus irony. This was actually the technique that was used by the Johnson Johnson vaccine, the AstraZeneca vaccine, and some others around the world. Though the AstraZeneca vaccine in particular actually had a thrombosis as a side effect, which is why it was stopped after some time around November 2021. As well as that, there were more conventional vaccines like the Novavax vaccine, which actually contained the uh, spike vaccine itself. Vaccines, at least in the Netherlands, were never truly considered mandatory. However, in 2021, there was actually an application that allowed you to generate QR codes which were used for international travel and for a time also to access uh, domestic restaurants, bars and canteens and other similar places where a lot of people would come together um, in a tight space. But even this system allowed people to enter only if they were either vaccined they tested negative for the coronavirus within the last couple of weeks using a PCR test or a quick test from a dedicated company or if they actually could prove that they have restored from COVID using a different kind of test. And this system worked really well until the coronavirus numbers ended up so low at the end of 2021 stroke the middle of 2022 that no measures were needed anymore. And therefore, the history in general of the coronavirus vaccine and it's the measures around it ended. And that's basically it when it comes to the general history of the development of coronavirus and the vaccine against it. Um, I myself got vaccines twice around 2021 stroke 2022. Um, so I definitely can see you next time. Bye bye. I hope you've enjoyed this video, if you do, please give a thumbs up and share this video with all your friends and perhaps consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.